I know a lot of people are enjoying Dragon's Dogma 2. And, you know, it looks like a great game. I've played like an hour and a half of it. I I liked it, but I ended up going back to Helldivers 2. <laughs> I, I can't stay away from that game. What little time I have to play video games, it's all going to that one. I, I just, I'm having such a fun time with that game. Though I know people like Dragon's Dogma 2. I, I'm not trying to trash on the game but now i wonder if the translation is accurate considering this news that just dropped today capcom goes full woke reveals its localization team alters video games for cultural adaptation preserving context and inclusive storytelling so considering that these games all come from japan because Capcom is a Japanese company. Uh, the unfortunate thing here is that means that the last part there, the inclusive storytelling, is added after the game is written. When they bring it over here, we get a more inclusive version of the game, which isn't what I'm looking for. I want the game as it was made, as it was designed by the people who made it. See, this is the problem. A lot of people will say, well, just don't buy Western games. So the problem is the American version, because there's a, I think there's a Capcom USA and then there's a Capcom Japan. When the United States branch gets them and they localize it, they change it so that it can be more inclusive. And that's not their job, but that's what they're doing now. And this has been going on for a little bit now. These translators have just been pushing their shit into it. And we have a whole breakdown of it over here, thanks to Grums, who broke this news. Uh, breaking at Capcom goes full woke in their localization changes, characters, gameplay, and more for DEI. So, uh, apparently... This is their Osaka-based localization team, which is full of Westerners... And it's extremely left-leaning and control, and they like to control the narrative. Apparently, he's got some insider scoops on this, and he's going to post some stuff tomorrow, so this will be interesting to follow. Definitely something I'll probably talk about on Flashcast. Uh, but here's the thread, and then I'm going to go back to his. I just want to show you what he points out. They posted this today at 1.32 a.m. my time, which is EST. And they put all this out, uh, not just translating the importance of context, bridging the linguistic gap, cultural sensitivity and characters. Okay, so, oh, we got to make sure that we change this character that was designed uh, so it doesn't offend people in the West. Inclusive language and representation. Uh, this includes gender stuff. Gender-specific language, cultural norms, diverse perspectives. So they're changing shit. Uh, adapting humor and wit. So unfunny people are trying to be funny based on jokes that are Japanese in nature. And I'd honestly rather have the Japanese jokes with maybe like a context subtitle instead of them trying to make a joke because these people are not funny. At all. So, that's what's going on now. And this is unfortunate. I hate these localizers, man. They just ruin everything. Because, well, oh, well, Japanese not doing it? Well, well, let's use their language. Colonialize their games. So, what is localization? The lens of game localization beyond mere translation... We're diving into the art of cultural adaptation, preserving context, and inclusive storytelling. That's in their first paragraph. It's that important. Cultural sensitivity and characters. Character design and development must be culturally sensitive. Inclusive language and representation, addressing gender-specific language, cultural norms, and diverse perspectives. 
the importance of context. Even gameplay elements might need a little cultural remix. Jeez, oh, Pete's. So Capcom's lost. Such a shame, man, because they have so many good IPs. So many good IPs. How long is it going to be until the Western localization teams actually goes in and alters gameplay code? Oh, we don't like the way this character looks. Let's have one of our guys go in and edit the character. I guarantee you that's going to happen eventually. So we're going to get self-imposed censorship on stuff that comes out of Japan. That used to be a thing, too. It happened quite a bit. And uh, I bet it's going to come back. Censorship. Uh, there was a lot of censorship in the Super Nintendo version of Final Fantasy VI, which was called Final Fantasy III. They still censor that game in localization, actually. The Pixel Remaster had changes done to it. I wonder, have we ever gotten an accurate version of that game? I think the one on PlayStation was pretty close, but uh, for the most part, they've always kind of changed some stuff around. Uh, but they, they censored a lot in the remaster, the Pixel remaster. I don't know if I did a video on that or not, but I just wish we could get the actual games. Like, stop changing shit because it makes you uncomfortable. Why don't you just put it out as is and let the people judge it for what it is? I guarantee you the uncensored version would be more of a hit than your fucked up, uh, woked up version of the script. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.